Okay. Okay, I'm seeing that the mic is working here now. Um, can you hear any music? That's odd that it would turn it off. Hmm. Okay, it should all be working now. Yay! And Almations, I'm so glad you could make it to the stream. I was really hoping you could be here, like, while I'm making it so that you can give me any, like, input that you want to give. So, alright, let's start this again. So at the beginning, I was just saying, before my mic betrayed me, <laughs> I was just saying that uh, we're going to be doing mostly pose and clothing. But we're also going to talk a little about the lighting, especially with this fire right here, which I really love. It is so much fun to do lighting for this kind of thing. And I really love how it was done on the face with this little glow here. And oh my gosh, he's got little pentagrams in his eyes. This guy is so cute. I'm sorry, I got off track. He's got like this little shine on his cheek that I always have some difficulty with doing, but this was just done really well so I wanted to point that out all right and uh, this pose was done with a 3d model so that uh, feature in this program is actually really great because it gets all the pr proportions done for you and you know where everything is placed and makes everything really easy but sometimes you do have to like make some modifications to it so it looks more traditional 3d S I mean traditional 2d I'm sorry so what I'm doing is I'm just sketching out the body the way I would do it if it was drawn without a 3D base. So I'm just sketching over it so we can see where everything should go. So now we have this pose. And pose-wise, um, so what we have here is the waist. Let me sketch that in for you so we can see it clearly. The waist attaches to the body like this. Like, basically like a pair of briefs, sort of. And you can see the curve where the legs would attach. So this leg attaches pretty smoothly, pretty naturally, but I would alter the top of this one like just slightly so that it doesn't curve inwards. Remember that these are like straight bones that attach somewhere about up here to the hip. Alright, next, let's look at the hands. Hands are notoriously hard. These hands are a pain to draw, honestly. <laughs> so you can either hide your hands behind articles of clothing or the body, or you can just try to draw them and hope it goes well. So I'm going to show you a quick little like technique that I use to draw hands. So the main part of the hand, like the palm and where it all attaches to the wrist, is basically a square. Depending on the angle or the position of the hand, it will like stretch and deform slightly. So try not to imagine it as a square too much, since uh, drawing is basically like trying to make things look 3D while it is 2D. So this is actually a cube that can be twisted around. And from that cube, we have the fingers which wrap over its shape. Once you think of it as a cube, you can see how the fingers would wrap over it. 
So we have him sort of pointing here, which means all of these fingers except the forefinger will be laid down against the palm. With the thumb wrapped over it. So fingers are all different lengths. Let's divide this up into three and then we can work on the links. Okay, so the pinky is going to be the shortest finger, so we're going to bring the knuckle up slightly, round up here, and then cut it off somewhere around here. Whereas these two middle fingers are much longer, so they're going to be pretty much where they are currently. I'm going to shorten this one just slightly compared to the other. Alright, then we gotta do the knuckles, because remember this is 3D, so some of them are going to be raised in front of others. Depending on your style, these could be really sharp or really soft. I usually go for really sharp, but I'm going to try to match the art style of Almation's original drawing. And then fingers do not typically curve outwards like this. So that's something that we're going to edit before this is this final thing is done. So if you look at how your fingers move when they curve and bend, they actually curve in. And this can make them look really dynamic in art too. Really dramatic and cool. So let's work on curving these in. From the middle knuckle here, we'll just curve in slightly from the original position. And erase as needed. And curve in. And then the last one, let's curve this guy in. Yay, welcome to the stream! Nice to see you here. Alright, and the last step on these are going to be the fingertips. So they're not usually rounded, they can be any shape really depending on your art style. Again, I often go for square lately, but I'm just gonna go for like close to realistic, which has them sort of curved to a point, sort of like an oval shape at the end. And this point will also help you add fingernails if you want to add those. Alright. And again, it curves in, so I'm just going to adjust this just slightly. And where the pinky connects to the palm... <laughs> Walker Fish, what's going on in the chat? <laughs> and where the pinky connects to the palm, we will erase this line. And then this one, where it used to be attached, will just go back into the hand. And this line here, you see where the side of the square is? We'll draw a curved line, and this is where the heel of the hand, I think that's what it's called, goes. I know how to draw, but I don't know what all the parts of the body are called. My apologies. <laughs> Alright, and then we have part of the hand done. Let's finish up the rest. Alright, so we have the pointer finger. That means we have one more knuckle here. And a slightly curved back line. 
which is the finger, and then the thumb, which, since this is the middle of the cube, the thumb will, the base of the thumb will be somewhere about right here. Let me change this color. It'll be right here, which means it will bend out and then back in right over itself. which will then have the fingers turn out like this. Remember it curves in. Your fingers are typically not 100% straight. And then the thumb. which is a very thick finger, so it's going to be considerably larger than the others. And then it connects down like this, because there's another part of the hand that curves out on the other side of the square, and you can see this in where there's like a line across your palm on your own hand. Looking at your own body when drawing pose, especially with hands, is very useful. Alright, let's erase this cube and polish up these last two fingers. I'm going to erase those little guidelines there since we don't need them. And looks like this finger is just a little bit small compared to the rest of the hand. And I can just edit this since it is a digital art program. It would be a little bit more difficult if I was doing this um, on like pen and paper. And we'll erase that out. And just so that we know what the thumb is, I'm going to add a slight nail here. And some slight nails on the rest of the fingers so that like the style is consistent. And then, since it's not 100% segmented like a doll or a robot, I'm going to erase this line right near the base here, so it looks more like it kind of just fits together, instead of being segmented parts that are inserted into each other. Like, we do have joints, they're just not as pronounced as that. Alright, and now this hand is done. And the general rule of thumb, pun intended, for drawing hands is to compare them against the size of the face. If you put your own hand against your face, you can about cover the entire thing with one hand, so just try and keep your hand about the size of the face when fully extended. Next is a really fun part, clothing. It's fun pretty much only if you love it. <laughs> Wrinkles can be a beast on you, honestly. They can be a real pain. Let's start with the collar. The basic shape of this is really good. This is how a collar is done. You take a curved piece, curve it around the neck, and then it attaches to the middle here where it would be buttoned, and then this curves around again. So that looks really good. But I'm going to show you how to make it look just a little fancier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this basic shape and we're going to make it slightly larger. So here it curves around from this corner here. This is where it starts to come in front of the neck. And it comes all the way to the middle here. 
make it slightly raised off the body so we know that it's three-dimensional it's a part of the clothing that is over the rest of the clothing and let's do the same on this side it's slightly lower because his face is leaning down on it so we have this curve over here much sharper than the other one since it's being pressed down alright now we have sort of a turtleneck thing going here so let's go um just slightly in since this is digital art I can't really measure it in inches like <clears throat> excuse me like I would on my traditional art so I'm just gonna wing it right here is where the collar will start which means we can erase this down to the bottom so at this point we will draw a curved line it comes down a little farther than the original line we planned just because that's how most collars seem to be made up. I could not tell you the reason for that, actually. Let's erase this. Because we're going to be curving this in, since the shoulder is also three-dimensional. It's about this shape, this half cylinder, like a piece of armor. So keep in mind that your collar is going to end up slightly curved when laying against the shoulder. So it also curves in. And this one can curve in a little too at the end. Because the shape that it's resting on is slightly different because of his position and the way his head is laying on it. Alright, now let's connect this to the shirt. But we are not quite done. One more step. <coughs> My voice is being really weird right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, the last step is the wrinkle. So you see where it curves in very sharply over here, we're going to have just a slight wrinkle there. This side gets a much larger one. And I do keep saying this before, but this is a lo lot of a stylistic choice. So a lot of this is a stylistic choice. So it's not like this is the right way to do it, but if you want it to be more realistic or this is the style you're going for, I want to show you how to do it. I definitely don't want to tell you guys, oh, you're drawing wrong, let me show you how to draw, because that's not how art works. I am not the gatekeeper of art. What the heck? <laughs> Okay, so that is one way to draw a collar. You can simplify it if you like. I'm just uh, gonna do the basic way that I do it. Let's move on to the rest of the wrinkles. Alright, so looks like he's got a basic dress shirt with cuffs at the end. It's a very basic kind of shirt, but it can be a real pain to draw sometimes. So let's draw against the outline of his body. And I really love this wrinkle right here. That's really good shading on it. Love that. Actually, I have a migraine right now, and I have been picking up a lot of shifts at work, so I am kind of tired. <laughs> Thanks for asking, but I am fine. Yeah, I know my voice sounds like trash. I will be back to my regular peppy Kenny voice eventually. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so next we're gonna do his arm, which connects to the body right here. And the reason it's important where the arm connects to the body is this is also where a seam is going to be on the shirt. This is where we sew the sleeves on. Let's put that in over here as well. So the seams will also affect where the wrinkles will fall. Here's where the elbow is. Wrinkles are gonna occur there as well. And then it tapers down slightly. It ends here at the wrist. I'm just gonna do that over here real quick as well. And I just want to erase the legs there real quick, it's kind of distracting. And since this shirt is not tucked in, that's a very nice and rebellious look. It's going to come down almost to the bottom of the hips here. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like it. This is Vince Vept. I love his music. It's awesome. Alright, and we already have the center line and the buttons put in. That's awesome. And the reason that the collar comes together here is because there's a button there. So I'm just going to move this one up slightly. Just slightly, because I like to nitpick. Oh, Clip Studio is reminding me to save my work. I always forget that. I should not forget that. Alright, time for wrinkles. So since the body bends in here, there are going to be a lot of wrinkles on this side. And the way these are going to appear typically is it's going to fold in once and then we will have the fabric layer a few times, sort of like that. So from this wrinkle we curve in and then out again into another wrinkle that does not go quite as far in as this one. One more, and then it curves out. On a dress shirt, unless it's like really worn or dirty, um, there are going to be minimal wrinkles because this is the sort of article of clothing that's typically very stiff. Let's add a few lines at the seam here. And there will be one or two wrinkles coming out from under the arm. And then another here. When was the last time I drew a Mega Man X art? That was quite a long time ago, actually. I kind of missed doing fan art. I should probably do that again sometime. Okay, so since there are wrinkles on this side, there are also going to be wrinkles on the outside because this is a curved object and it will wrinkle as it wraps around the arm. So we draw from the shoulder, get down here slightly, and then we curve out and back in. Usually just once. We don't want to go too crazy with the wrinkles on a piece in this style since it's a little bit like minimal it's not like hyper realistic or anything so we don't want to go too crazy or it looks 
messy. I tend to go a little too crazy with my uh, wrinkles, so I'm just trying to keep myself from doing that this time. <laughs> Oh, you don't have to, like, apologize for asking. I'm glad you like my art, thanks. And then it's basically straight down until we get to the elbow right here. When it bunches up. And you have to try not to keep the wrinkles symmetrical. If it was like this, it would look more like, um, a puffed sleeve. Or... I don't know, basically just a puffed sleeve. So try and keep the wrinkles asymmetrical since they occur naturally and nature is random and very very seldom symmetrical except you know like in birds butterflies alright <clears throat> excuse me and the typical shape for a wrinkle like this is going to be a hook so the concept of this hook is that it comes down from the corner of a wrinkle like this and then hooks in. And this portion is where the cloth folds inward against the body, so it's going to be in shadow. So adjust the size and position of these hooks based on where this center point is. And I'm going to erase that back there because it's distracting me. And again, not too many wrinkles since this is a dress shirt. Let's move on to the forearm. So this can have just one or none. So we have one wrinkle in here, and again, this folds in weight against the body, and we'll be in shadow. And finally, the cuffs. The cuffs are so much fun. Let's put a little bit of detail into them. So the button for the cuffs is going to be down here, which means it's divided at this point. And since this arm is hanging down, the cuff is going to be pointing down too, which means we will have our line curved down. Keeping it looking 3D is very important. It adds a nice little touch to the art. And as you can see, it's also it's already curved here. You can already see that it's 3D. Which is very good. Very nice un <coughs> excuse me, very nice understanding of 3D in this. I'm just gonna wrap it around the sleeve there. Alright, and then here where the button is, we can actually divide it. And you don't have to have a line all the way to the button, it can actually look pretty cool if you just have, like, breaks in the line. Looks more natural since you would have, like, differences in the lighting or slight wrinkles that would blank out the line or cause it to curve. Alright, back to the main body of the shirt. There was actually a really good wrinkle over here <coughs> in the original. So I'm going to trace over this. And the reason this wrinkle is here is because the body is bent. So it will be straight up here and then start to curve in in the middle. So that means the wrinkles will have a general shape of this and like I said before the main shape is going to be this hook sort of thing which you can already see over here. Let's put in just one more see how that looks. That looks pretty good so let's keep it. And then, at the last button, the shirt will open up because it does not want to be pushed together unless it absolutely has to be. Shirts are very rebellious. <laughs> and then we can just 
connect it all with a straight line at the bottom. And like I was talking about with the cuff here, we don't have to connect the buttons with a 100% like straight line. We can actually like have small breaks in it. I'm going to have the lines like only at the buttons since that's again stylistic choice. Let's move this over a little bit. There we go. Alright, and then the cuff on this side. You guys saw how I did it. We do a curved line based on where it's pointing in 3D. This time it's pointed like slightly up and at us, which is why we can see the top of it. You can only see the top of a 3D object if it is pointed at you. So, if it was pointed away from us, it would look more like this and we would be able to see the bottom but this is not in line with his pose button goes over here and then the sleeve is going to be straight on this side but it's going to have a lot of wrinkles on this side as it folds over itself. Straight down here and up here we'll have the folds show up just slightly. Most of this is going to be hidden behind the hand which is always convenient. Let's put in one of these nice little hooks. Line on the cuff break in the cuff. And let's erase the initial guidelines here. And the, uh, the collar is still attached to this, so I'm going to leave the collar. Don't want to delete that. Alright, and there we go. We have our dress shirt all done. And it is, you can see that it is basically like the original here. I've just made a few slight modifications to it. So I've had it follow his body more here. Typically, if the shirt was a lot thicker, it would have these bulky wrinkles and would not cling to his body so tightly but keeping in mind the material of this shirt which is going to be some thin ah uh, what are these shirts made of anymore who knows whatever it is it's thin it's stiff and it adheres to the body very nicely and very closely Let's just clean this up since it's going to be covered by the shirt and hand anyways. A uniform shirt. Oh, like the like the ones in anime, like the black ones. Those are always fun to draw. Those are really cute. Okay, so for a uniform shirt, the collar would actually be different, so let me change this up. One of those shirts that you see in anime a lot, that like the generic background characters usually, or the really cool angsty characters, where they have a very, very stiff collar. So that's where the difference in collars is going to come in here. 
So right now it looks like a neck brace. We'll split it down the middle. And erase where it will fall behind the face. And typically these collars will have like a little stripe at the bottom or against the entire edge of them. Like it will be 100% black and then at the edge you'll get this little box. So I'm just going to put that in. And these kinds of shirts do have very large and prominent buttons. And you can have a lot of fun with these. Like you can add designs to them if you want your character to stand out. Or just have them be a very high contrast color. And I'm going to curve this in at the end just slightly. Alright, and here's an alternate collar type for you guys. There you go. Alright, last I would like to look at the face. Well, not last. Let's see, how, how long is this video? I don't want it to be too short. How long have I been streaming? YouTube, please tell me. Okay, about 40 minutes. That's not that short. Okay. So, I'm going to look at the head and how the features and hair have been placed. So this is a very good face shape, very masculine. It's very difficult to get a masculine face if you're too used to drawing girls in manga. So that's very good. Let's clean this up a little. So the jaw would come to a stop around right here, and then we would place the ear. eyes look really good. I always have trouble with drawing eyes on male characters. How long do I plan to stream? Um, I usually try to stream at least an hour. So that's probably how long I'm going to be streaming today. And then we have the nose. And if it were me, and this is totally fine, but if it were me, I would move the mouth up slightly. Whoops, that's not an eraser. So let me know if you are cool with the position of this mouth. Because again, I don't want to tell you how to, how to like, how it should look. Because it's your art. So I'm just trying to keep it proportional. Mm Yeah, I'm trying not to make like, ah, hello, crazy looking mouth. So since the jaw is up here, it would follow that the mouth would be somewhere around here, depending on your style. And I am just going to keep saying that. So we have the basic mouth now. Let's see how we can position it. Since his head does seem to be tilted down, the mouth is not going to end up very high up.
And the head is tilted, so the mouth is going to be tilted as well. Alright, let's see if I just redrew what was in the original. Nope, slightly raised. Alright, so this is with like a really realistic proportional face, which is not always what you might be going for in your art. A lot of styles look better because they are not realistic, so... You don't always have to strive for hyper-realism or keep everything perfect. It's more about like what looks good to you in the end. Okay, and the hair. Really loving the hair here. Let's see. We're going to have the hair come slightly off the head. It looks like it comes out in some spikes back here. And then in front of the face in more spikes back here. And I'm not going to do much with the uh, hair because it not only does it already look really good, but I don't want to mess up the style. I'm just going to show you how it is broken up. So we can see that we have the part here. Let me erase the head real quick. We can see we have the place where the hair parts right here, where these two lines come together. So let's draw these down to that. And then from the part, we have the main portion of hair here, which has been split up into three strands. And then comes the rest of it in front of the ear. And all else is going to be behind the head. So that's basically how this hair was structured. Or that's how I draw hair structure. And let me show real quick how I draw hands one more time. We have the square, we have where the thumb is, and we have the four joints. So it's attached to the wrist, and it comes out, and then it curves back in. Because like is shown here, Again, the hand is usually not straight, so it's going to curve. And the fingers are all different lengths, so this bottom right here, this thing that looks like a mitten, is also going to curve. Thumb comes out, bends back in. So now we have our fancy mitten shape. We can start to add the fingers. And the joints will occur about halfway here. Again, not too realistic since your fingers have like two joints in the middle and I'm only drawing one. But we have the varying lengths of the fingers and we have the pinky hidden behind this last finger here. And a hand at rest will typically have the thumb more behind it. So we can move that in here. Yep, this is a this is an original character drawn by Almation, sent in for like a custom art lesson slash critique session over stream.
And if you did want to draw a hand in a side view like this, there are a few tricks we can use. So we have the thumb joint here, that's going to be about the most important part, and then the palm coming off of it. Thumb curves in, fingers curve in. Everything is layered over it, each other, which makes this position of the hand a little bit more difficult to draw, since you have to keep track of all of the layers at once. And again, remember that it curves in. And I'm just going to clean up the sketchiness of this thing. Alright, now we have a couple of different possible hand positions. I'm just going to leave the slightly modified original one. Alright, and there we go. These are the critiques that I would make on the final piece. Except for one more thing. Let me just show you the wrinkles in the pants. So, since this is a uniform, I'm going to go with this one uniform style of pants. There are, like, really cool, really stylish baggy pants, but I'm not the best at drawing those, so I'm not going to do that today. So we have wrinkles fanning off from the crotch here. Just a few. And then we can have maybe one wrinkle down here, but these pants are very, very straight. So they will not have very many wrinkles at all. And the reason I mentioned baggy pants is because of how these wrinkles are in the original piece. And that would look so cool, but not what I'm doing a lesson on today, mainly because I also have to learn that. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I say crotch. Sometimes when you're drawing, you have to say things, because that's what they are. Alright, that is it for this uh, critique video. We did pose, we did clothing, we showed a few different ways to draw the collar, and again, a lot of this is going to be based on your style. I'm just going to show you how to do the basics and how it would be drawn if it was hyper-realistic. You could paint over this whole thing and make a very, very realistic looking young man. Or you could go in a totally different direction and make it look really cool and cartoony or anime style. Like something from Studio Trigger. And that is that. Thank you so much to Owlmations YouTube for sending in your piece. I really had a lot of fun with this, and I hope I didn't butcher your art too much in uh, showing how 
to edit the little things like wrinkles. I'm so glad you learned a lot. Thank you for being a part of this event, and thanks for everyone to come for who came to the stream. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to end it here. Uh, I hope you all have a good day. Stay safe, stay sweet, and I will see you later.